Is it always a good idea to address an issue that you're having with someone else? Is it always in your best interest or in the best interest of the relationship to say something that has bothered you, that has affected you, that's had an impact on you in some way? And the answer is no. It's not always a good idea to bring something up or say something. There are definitely times when it is, and I have a whole talk on that. That's uh, the last talk that I gave was all about how to know when to address something, bring something up or say something to someone else about an issue that's come up. When is it appropriate to do that? And I give you some guidelines to go by so that you can know when to speak up. But there are definitely times where it is not a good idea to do it, where it's not in our best interest to do so. And so I want to give you some guidelines today in this talk to go by so that you know when to not say anything or when it would be a better idea not to say anything. Are you ready for them? I'll give them to you in just a second here. But first, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. If you're new here, take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you are back again, it's always good to have you. Make sure that you say hello. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit those buttons. That would be amazing. And yeah, either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, the Shift Society, where we are going deep into learning how to think better, feel better, have better, show up better, live better every single day. We're doing the deep work with accountability, tools, and step-by-steps. That's happening in the Shift Society. You can click the link below, get on the wait list so that you know when we open up registration again. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. So how do you know when you should shut it down and not say anything when there is an issue? The first guideline to go by is when you know that the person does not handle feedback well. When you know that with that person saying something, they are not going to handle it well, and it's probably going to make things worse. So they are going to blow up at you. They are going to retaliate towards you. They are going to get all angry and worked up. It's just nothing's going to get resolved. They're not going to be able to hear you, to listen to what's going on, to take responsibility for their part in it. They're just not going to be able to. And you know that it's just going to turn into something unhealthy and unhelpful and maybe even destructive. So if that is, is the case and you know that that person does not handle feedback well, even if it's pretty light, like, like, hey, could you just maybe not cut me off while I'm in the middle of a sentence? If you know that that would cause them to explode, well, it might be time to make new friends. <laughs> Kidding, sort of. But, right, if you are in a close relationship with someone who is that explosive, then um, it might be a really one-sided relationship and you need to decide whether or not that's something that you want in your life. If they cannot address things, talk about things, or work through anything. The next kind of guideline about when to not say something is um, when you know that it's not going to make a difference. So let's say you have someone in your life who complains a lot, like complains a lot. Like we all complain. That's just part of being human. I don't think even there's necessarily anything wrong with having some complaints, right? As long as we, as Brene Brown puts it, piss and moan with perspective, right? Being able to say like this sucks and also, you know, it's not literally, it's not the end of the world. It's annoying. It's frustrating, but I'll figure it out. I'll get through it. Or I'll just sort of, you know, feel crummy for now. And then, you know, get to the other side of it after I've had my little pity party or whatever that is. So 
I'm talking about people in your life who may always be complaining or always being, you know, looking at the glass half empty, always finding something wrong, always finding, finding something that's falling short, not meeting their expectations, not good enough, whatever that is. And you find it hard because you're like, wow, like, you know, it's not like I need you to be like rainbows and sunshine all the time, but you kind of pointing out all of these things that are wrong all the time is, it's a bit of a downer, right? It's a bit of a downer and um, it doesn't feel great to have conversations when it's always spinning in that direction. But you know that you have said something in the past and you've said like, hey, I noticed that you have been complaining a lot. Like, could we just maybe focus on not complaining so much? Or can we focus on some things that are going well? Or, you know, I find it really hard to be around a lot of complaining and a lot of like looking at for everything that's wrong. I just, I find that hard. Or, you know, like it doesn't, it's not necessary to be negative all the time, right? And you've addressed it and nothing changes. Right. And the person's just like, oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And then, you know, find something else to complain about. So it's going off about the price of gas or, you know, the state of. I don't even know. I'm trying to think of something. The state of the their their child's bedroom, how clean it is or how messy it is, I guess, how clean it isn't. Right? They're always kind of finding something to pick apart, something to be disgruntled about no matter what you say. And so, if that is the case, and you find that no matter what you say, nothing changes, then it might be a good time to be like maybe I would just won't say anything and maybe I'll just work at um kind of just disengaging. Um, when they are being really complainy, maybe I'll just work at just like not getting pulled into it and just being like, oh yeah, and not trying to fix it, not trying to solve it, not trying to change them and just being like, you know what, this is just their thing. It's not going to change. I'm just going to not participate in it, not going to engage it, not going to get worked up about it. Just kind of leave it and just be like, that's just what they need to do. Right? So being able to manage yourself around it instead of thinking that you need to control them around it thinking that you need them to be a certain way so that you can be okay. And instead you just being like, you know what? I've said something, it's not changing. So I'm just going to work on figuring out a way for me to be okay in this circumstance or when I am around this person. The next sort of guideline to know when um, you don't need to say anything or when it wouldn't be helpful to say something is when it will actually, like I mentioned a minute ago, make things worse. If that person will um, take what you said and instead of addressing it, being willing to have a conversation about it, they are going to hang on to it and then use it against you. Or even in that moment, they are going to spit back um, with something really nasty. Like you've brought something up in a respectful way. You've addressed something that's bothered you and they take it really personally. It's really, maybe it's hit some shame in them. And we all know that when shame is hit in someone who, you know, struggling with shame, that when that shame is hit, there's a possibility. One of the possible reactions is lashing out in anger. And so if you know that if you bring something up, this person is going to lash out. This person is going to get defensive. They're going to get angry. It's not going to help to resolve the issue by saying something. Then it might be time to um, not say something, which then it could escalate even more, which is the next one is when it is unsafe to say something. When the person could actually become explosive, aggressive, or violent, then it's probably a good time to be like, you know what? I mean, obviously I'm not going to say something if, you know, saying something to this person is going to end up putting me in danger. That's an obvious one, but sometimes we need that reminder that like, you know what, if this person cannot handle it and they become dangerous, they become nasty, they become cruel, they become mean, they fight back hard, then I'm probably it's probably a good idea to not say anything. I'm going to say not probably, then it's a good idea to not say anything. The next guideline for when to not say something is for us ourselves, for you yourself, when you haven't had the time to calm down and process. This is such 
a big one. This is what I teach a lot of in my mass or er, workshop, speak and feel heard about really getting clear about what's happening inside of you before you say anything. And I teach you how to do that in that workshop. You can get more information about that in the description below. But before you've had time to process, if you're just reacting and you know that you're going to say something that you're going to regret, if you're going to say something nasty or hurtful, or, you know, you're feeling defensive. So you're trying to offend in your defensive state, take a second, take a beat, take a breath, <laughs> take a break, process what's going on, get clear on how you're really feeling, what's coming up for you, and then addressing it in a clean, clear, and classy way, which I also teach in my master, or yeah, in that workshop, Speak and Feel Heard. But it's not usually a great idea to say something in the height of an emotion, in the height of anger, in the height of shame, right? In the height of whatever it is that's coming up for you that's gonna make you react in a way that's intended to hurt or harm when you're feeling defensive and flipping that into offense. So take a minute, process it. Don't try not to, I know this is like a really big undertaking um, and it can be really difficult to kind of do that work to stop yourself before saying something but thinking about even too like when have you said something in the height of that emotion um, that has really hurt harmed or even destroyed a relationship I mean like you know what like I want to learn how to not do that and practice that probably a good idea the next guideline for when to not say something is um, when saying something is intended to hurt or harm someone else. When, again, you're so caught up in the emotion like I was just talking about, where all you can see is red and all you want to do is hurt someone because you have felt hurt. To retaliate because you have felt wounded. You want to wound them from your own wounding and... There is a way to address an issue in a clear and assertive and strong way. Holding your ground is different than trying to push someone else over. So it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat and just be okay with everything and just be okay with everything and just lie down when someone is attacking you. Absolutely not. But learning how to be strong and stable and assertive when that is happening in a way that holds your ground without trying to shove, push, kick, or punch someone else over, either figuratively or actually literally. But more often for most of us, it's figuratively when we're really trying to wound someone else. Then it's not a great time to say something. Um, Another time where it might not be appropriate to say something is when the relationship isn't deep enough to handle that level of authenticity, right? So let's say your uh, boss uh, didn't give you uh, the praise that you were expecting for a project you just completed. They didn't give you kind of the shout out, the recognition or the praise in the meeting that you were hoping for and you were feeling disappointed about that. Uh, and if you don't have that kind of relationship with your boss, if it's a very kind of surface level professional relationship, it might not be appropriate to then go in their office afterwards and be like, you know what, like that really hurt my feelings when you didn't, when you didn't give me that shout out, when you didn't publicly praise my effort or my result or whatever that was. It really hurt my feelings because it really kind of brought up stuff from my childhood, not really feeling ever good enough for my parents, not really feeling recognized, not feeling important. And it really triggered that in me. And that really, yeah, that really like that really hurt. And I found that really, um, I found that really painful, right? <laughs> now that might be something appropriate that you would say to a partner, that you would say to a best friend, um, but probably not something that most of us are going to say to our boss. And so in that case, not giving that kind of full transparency, vulnerability, and honesty in a relationship that isn't deep enough to hold it. So that's another time not to say something or being really kind of um, reflective about how you're going to address something and making sure that you are addressing something in to the 
parallel depth of the relationship. So you're not going to go into kind of deep feelings and vulnerabilities and insecurities that are kind of deeper things with a surface relationship because the relationship doesn't have that capacity to hold it. So when it's not appropriate to say something is when the relationship isn't deep enough. So trying to figure out where that parallel is and that's how deep you go based on the depth of the relationship. Another time when not to say something is when it goes against someone else's boundaries. So um, if someone has said to you, you know, right now I'm going through a really hard time and, you know, regardless of what you think about the decisions that I'm making or what's happening with me um, or where I'm at in my life, regardless of what your opinions are of that right now, I don't need suggestions or constructive feedback right now. All I need is, um, support or at the very least an attempt at understanding. That's all that I have the capacity for right now in while I'm going through this. And so if someone has said that to you, have asked, has asked that of you and they're doing something and they're making a choice that you're like, Oh, I don't know about that. Like, you know, I have thoughts about that, but they have asked you not to share those kinds of thoughts, then that would be a good time to not. If someone has asked you specifically not to bring something up, not to talk about something, not to point a particular thing out, right? If someone has asked you not to comment on their weight, their eating habits, their relationship status, and you all of a sudden have a thought about that, but they've asked you specifically not to comment on it, then that is the time to not say something. If saying something is crossing a request or a boundary that they have set. Another time when to not say something is when saying nothing is more powerful than saying something. When not taking the bait, not getting pulled in, not reacting is more powerful than getting into the argument, than stating your piece, than trying to make them see things your way or trying to be right. When you're like, you know what? I don't need to get pulled into this. And this isn't being a doormat and just being passive. This is called selective and intentional non-engagement. When someone is kind of making a comment to try to get under your skin, get a reaction out of you, and you're intentionally just choosing to just be like, you know what? No, not going to engage this, not going to participate in this, not going to take the bait, not going to say anything because I don't need to. And I know that saying something is not going to help. It's not going anywhere positive. It's not going to be good for me. Not going to be good for the relationship. Not going to be a good conversation. Not necessary. I am going to choose to not say anything and I'm going to protect my peace as a result. There are times to speak up, to address, to say something. And there are definitely times when not to. These are some guidelines for you. Pick one. Which one are you like, yep, that really, ugh, I need to remember that one. I'm going to write it down, put it in my back pocket, write it in lipstick on my mirror, whatever it's going to take for me to remember that and practice it. I'm going to do that. Let me know what that one is in the comment section below. Working on the skills for effective and assertive, clear, respected style of communicating, way to speak and feel heard is all laid out for you in my workshop, Speak and Feel Heard. The link is right down there. Always good to have you here. Always so excited by the humans who are here for better. The humans who value the short time that they have on earth. You who are here valuing the short time that you have on on this earth by wanting to think better, feel better, have better and live better and create better for yourself and for the world as a whole. Knowing that this individual work is not only changing within you, changing things within you, but it's also changing the world. 
you show up better. You show up cleaner, classier, with more confidence, with more strength, with more authenticity, with more compassion. It makes the world a better place. So be proud of yourself for that. I know I am. Always good to have you here. Be good to yourselves. Be good to those around you. Until next time, take good care.